preach for a long time. It means if I teach for a long time, it means I'm, I'm going to preach short. So in closing, I'd like to say, <laughs> if you can stand with me, open your Bible to the book of Esther, chapter 4. Book of Esther, chapter 4, starting at verse 12. Esther, chapter 4, verse They told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou in thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? You don't. I want to preach a common thought, but from a different idea. But I want to preach why us right now. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much, Lord, for the answered prayers you've already given us, Lord. I thank you for the presence that we feel. That's why we're, we come here, Lord, for the opportunity to be in your presence, Lord. Jesus, I pray for your anointing just a little longer, God. Lord, I pray it is your word and your message, and I pray for a response to your word, Jesus. Inspire us, Lord. Change us. Mold us. Whatever you have to do, Lord, be the authority in this house, God. We give you all the honor and praise, God. We love you, Lord. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Why us right now? Now, if you've been in church any amount of time, at some point you've heard the thought, for such a time as this. And I'm going to go along those lines, but a little different. First, I need you to understand that when I say us, I mean all of us. As one collective team, as one collective church. So why the Pentecostals of DeWitt right now? Yes, we know that God has his timing. When you heard the preaching for such a time as this, we know that Joshua was not meant for today. We know that Paul was not called for today. But you are. To me, that was always encouraging first time I heard it. To know that of all the Pauls and all the Peters and all the Marks and the Johns, they were then. Now is the time of might. As scary as that is to some of you. I, I had faith in God's timing. It may have caused some of you to pray a little bit harder. And then 2020 came. And I forgot all about God's timing. My pastor often laughs at me, or with me, depends on how you want to look at it. What a year for your first year of pastor. He said he's constantly telling folks and make, make a note of, man, what a year. And yeah, I'll be honest. It, it's it's more of a challenge, I imagine. I really can't compare it to anything else. But all the pastors tell me, oh, son, we're, we're all rookies in this. None of us have pastored in a pandemic before. It's not the same. Because let's be honest. Some of them have a luxury of pastoring through a pandemic for the first time with a congregation that they've been preaching to for 30 years. I am still trying to reach people, some people, who still don't even know all my kids' names. And that's fair, because I don't know all your kids' names. 
It's a different relationship. So not only are we trying to navigate this pandemic, but we're still trying to get familiar to each other. It's quite a challenge. We didn't have time to get a whole lot of things situated, really going the way we wanted things before the world came to an end, it seems like. And I'll be honest with you, the changes and the challenges of 2020 has had my, my attention. Everything I've done for the you know, time to prepare is trying to get us to overcome the pandemic. My entire mindset this whole year has been trying to get us to overcome it and to have revival instead of. But last week we had an evangelist with us, Brother Adam Gooding, preached a good thought. I really enjoyed the fellowship with him the day before. I enjoyed the fellowship with him afterwards. In the parking lot of a Mecca, as we were finishing, and his wife was already in the truck, my kids were already in my car. I don't know how it came up, but the, the, the conversation again of the first year pastoring during the pandemic came up. And I said something like, what a year to try it, right? And I was, man, it changed everything. He says, Mike, you're looking at it wrong. He said, you're looking at it as far as what you're going up against. But look at it this way. The last pastor resigned, right? I said, yes, sir. Well, what would have happened to the church if you hadn't have been there for your first year? Now, I'm not here putting myself on, pat myself on the back, but it changed my, the way I'm looking at this pandemic. I'm no longer saying I'm enduring the pandemic. I believe we're here to stop the pandemic from crushing the church. We're not trying to survive it. We're standing up to it, okay? It's not, it's not going to destroy anything. The greater is he that is in me and he that's in the world. We're keeping the church alive, hallelujah. We're not just surviving, but we are reviving. Not through the pandemic, but despite the pandemic. Wow. The pandemic is just another thing that we are called upon at this time to stand against. Matthew 16 and 18. I love this verse. You, the lot of you stick with me, you're going to hear me make this point a lot. I've already made it at least five times in the last year I've been here. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's not about us enduring the attacks of hell. It's about hell not being able to stop us. Get it through your skull. We are the mega force. We are the force to be reckoned with. We are the conquerors. The Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. It's time for a little perspective. Why us right now? Because we're needed right now. Because God timed it this way. We're always talking about God's perfect timing when that little extra money comes out of nowhere. Boy, we'll shout when that check comes in from nowhere or somebody blesses us with a, Woo, God, this timing. But don't you know you are that gift to the world? You are the perfect timing to that lost soul at Pigwig. You are the perfect timing to the lost souls walking up and down these streets. Why us right now? Because the world needs us right now. It, the world is scared. It does not need a scared church. The whole world has lost its mind. It needs a stable church. It doesn't need a church talking about conspiracy theories. It needs a church talking about Jesus. It doesn't need a church worried about what's going to happen with the presidency. It needs a church telling everybody about the kingdom. Why us right now? Because we've got more important things to do than be afraid or to worry. So no, I don't plan on ever again complaining about the struggles of trying to pastor, learning how to pastor through a pandemic. But instead, I look forward to telling everybody about the testimony about how God trusted us 
to keep a church alive. I want to tell them about the people coming with me, hallelujah, and saying, I'm going to get my family in church for you, brother Gates. We're going to get behind you. And not only is the church going to survive, but my family's going to have revival. I'm waiting for the kids to get excited. And my school's going to have revival. I'm waiting for folks to tell me that their co-workers are having revival. Why us right now? Because we have to have revival right now. Hallelujah. Let's stand, please. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Back to the point. <laughs> this is your response. You choose whether or not I'm full of hot air or if I'm preaching the word of God. You choose whether you're going to be afraid or confident. You choose to take a stand or to get out of the way. Man, what a stand we can make. The gates of hell shall not prevail against us protecting our loved ones. The gates of hell shall not prevail against us protecting our church. Paul wasn't called for this. God didn't need Moses for this. No, 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 no. Let's make it personal. He knew there'd be a Mark Davis in 2020 that he could count on. And he's waiting on him to do the job. Laura, he's waiting on you right now. Kids, he's waiting on you right now. The opportunity for response is now. I'm offering you an opportunity to pray and even say, Yay, Lord! Or forgive me, God, but not now. That's up to you. Pray and make up your mind. Let's talk to God.